Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, today we are celebrating the feast of the Epiphany of the Lord. Epiphany means manifestation or revelation. So on this feast of the Epiphany, we remember in a special way how the Lord Jesus Christ was revealed to the world. There are many ways and occasions in which he was revealed to the world. Christmas was possibly the greatest of such manifestations and the shepherds were the privileged people to witness to this great event. The visit of the Magi from the East indicates the manifestation of Jesus to the non-Jews and at the baptism of Jesus who was manifested as the beloved son of the Father to the Jewish people. And the epiphany of Jesus to the Gentiles, represented by the visit of the Magi, the three wise men, is very significant for us. For it reminds us that we, though not were part of the original chosen people, are given the privilege to be members of the body of Christ. It is an affirmation of the universal possibility of salvation for each and every one in God's creation. The spirit of today's feast is expressed by Saint Paul in the second reading when he says, Brethren, the mystery was made known to me through a revelation that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. A letter to the Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6. Interestingly, as we know, St. Matthew is writing the gospel for the Jewish Christians, and hence he often presents his speech about the fulfillment of the Old Testament in the New Testament. And he presents Jesus as a new Moses. But he begins and ends the gospel by talking about Gentiles, beginning with the visit of the Magi, three Gentile people or wise men, and ending the gospel with the mission commandment to proclaim the gospel to the whole world, to all nations, even beyond the Jewish territories. Matthew 29:90. Yes, salvation in Jesus Christ is for all. That's why I said today's feast reminds us of the special privilege we all have received in God's infinite mercy and love. That we are all part of God's plan from the beginning. We are co-heirs to the immeasurable wealth of God's kingdom. We are made his children. However, we become worthy of it only if we imbibe the spirit of the Magi, who became God's chosen ones and who responded to God's choice in a special way. Therefore, let's walk through the whole episode with them to understand their spirit and to understand where we stand. The wise men from the East, Matthew does not tell that there were three, but we presume so because of the three gifts mentioned. They were led by a new star, they saw, and they come to pay homage to Jesus. And following the star, they start a journey, which brought them to Jerusalem. Though their journey was supposed to go beyond Jerusalem, the splendor, the beauty, and the majesty of the city of Jerusalem possibly distracted them and made them forget the direction given by the star. For a moment, they listen to their own thinking that the king should be born in this beautiful place and in the palace of the king. Hence they decided to search for the new king in the palace of King Herod. So they went to Herod and asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? Herod, though upset and really troubled, calls his group of wise men, the scribes and the priests, and ask them the same question, where will the Christ be born? And both the Magi and Herod 
get the answer to their question from this group who knew the scriptures. They searched the scriptures and they gave them the answer. And once the Magi get the answer from the scriptures, as was explained by them, and realizing that this king is not born in the royal palace, they begin to follow the star and reach the manger where they worshipped the king. Dear sisters and brothers, let's stop the story there and look at these characters. The Magi had a star that guided them, but in a moment of distraction, they forgot about it and almost missed the Messiah. In their human thinking, they went to search for the Lord in the wrong place. But the scriptures, as explained by the scribes and the priests, helped them to find the star again. It is consoling to know that even if you lose sight of your star, your ideal, your goal, the scripture is there to show you the star back. Because as St. Jerome says, knowledge of the Bible is knowledge of the Lord. So learn your Bible, read it daily, and you will never miss the ultimate goal, even if you may go astray sometimes. Further, the Magi were looking for the newborn king to worship, to pay homage to him. We have come to pay homage to him, they told Herod. They did not come to get anything but to give. Their concern was the king alone, and they knew the greatest gift they could give to the divine king is worship. Yes, that's what we can also offer to the Lord, our greatest gift, worshiping him. And they symbolically paid their homage or worshiped him in the form of the three gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold representing the kingship of Jesus, frankincense his divinity as it was used in the temple worship and myrrh for anointing the dead thus indicating knowingly or unknowingly that this king who is born now was was born to die and that's how he became the king and savior we know by time and they symbolically already indicated that in contrast Look at King Herod. He also came to know about the birth of the king, but he responded in a completely different way because he was not concerned about what he could give to the king, but what he could get. The new king was surely a threat to him, a rival. So he was filled with fear and anger and turns out to be a murderer massacring so many innocent children. Anger is the emotion of the lower appetite, tells St. Thomas Aquinas, which arises when we perceive a good, but know that it is difficult to obtain. Herod knew that he had some good to get, but now this newborn king is there, possibly as a hindrance to obtain what he wanted. But of course, we know it was a misunderstanding. Jesus was never a threat to his political ambitions. And dear sisters and brothers, this happens to anyone whose only concern is they themselves, self-centered, fear, anger, frustration, all away to those who are concerned only about themselves, their gain, and not about what they can give to others. Give to God. Those who think about others and God, they are not afraid. They are not, cons they are not frustrated because they are not concerned about themselves. The Magi went to the manger and worshipped the new king, Jesus Christ. And they were given instruction, divine instruction, to change their returning route. And this will happen to those who truly come to worship the Lord, who experience Jesus, they cannot remain the same. If there is no change in me and you, after coming to meet the Lord in the Sunday Mass or in our other daily prayers, possibly there is something wrong in our attitude to prayer, to worship. 
in our prayer intentions. Nobody who meets Jesus can remain unchanged in life. And there was this third group of people there who knew very well about the newborn king, the priests and the scribes at Herod's palace. But as we know, this knowledge was useless for them. Bethlehem was just about 10 kilometers from Jerusalem, but they preferred to ignore him. They decided not to turn to the Lord. They decided not to commit themselves to the Lord, unlike the Magi. Knowing the right thing, knowing Jesus theoretically, knowing the church theoretically, does not save anyone, does not touch anyone. Salvation requires commitment commitment to the truth we have known. That we commit ourselves to what we believe in, what we profess. Faith without action is useless, says St. James. So theoretically knowing about Bible, about Jesus, about the church does not help us. Do we commit ourselves? And this group was part of the chosen ones, the privileged ones, the Jewish chosen people, the Israelites, but they missed the Messiah. This contrast between the chosen ones and the others is a paradox Jesus, Jesus often laments about, that those who are called might miss the kingdom, but sinners and ordinary people from the east and the west will come and sit for the feast in the kingdom of heaven. For example, Luke chapter 13, verse 29. Our privileged position as Christians, as baptized people, will not profit us if we are not committing ourselves to our faith. Let me conclude with an insight from late Pope Benedict XVI. He always emphasized that both reason and faith together help us to find the truth and that where reason ends, faith begins. The story of the Magi shows that the truth of reason has revealed in the nature, the sciences, the star, can bring us to the Lord, bring us to the truth about God, provided we use it properly and are open to go beyond the creation to the Creator. But finally, as we see, the Lord who guides even the nature guides the Magi directly. They return home in a route revealed to them. They are no more depending on the reason, on the light of reason of the nature. Thus, there is a movement from the light of the natural reason to the light of faith, to divine guidance. It is sad that many are mesmerized by the truth found in sciences, in the nature and forget the one who guides even the nature and the natural sciences. On this feast day, dear sisters and brothers, we thank the Lord for making us co-heirs in the riches of God. And we pray for the grace to follow his light always until we find him and commit ourselves to him in true worship so that we will not miss him in our lives. May the Lord bless all of us. Amen.